Welcome back to Hardware Unbox. Today it's time to benchmark another one of Nvidia's new laptop RTX graphics cards, the GeForce RTX 2060. Given the high popularity and widespread use of the GTX 1060 in gaming laptops, the RTX 2060 is said to be one of the key offerings in Nvidia's latest lineup. And judging by our comment section, it definitely seems like it's one that you guys are most interested in. So in my previous review of the RTX 2070 Max-Q, I spent a lot of time talking about how Nvidia's naming scheme for their laptop GPUs pretty much sucks and is misleading for potential buyers. That's still the case with the RTX 2060, but I'm not going to spend as much time uh, on this issue. If you're interested in my in-depth thoughts on it, uh, check the previous review. So the RTX 2060 for laptops uses the same TU-106 GPU as the desktop card with the same core configuration. So we're getting 1920 CUDA cores, 240 Tensor cores, and 30 ray tracing cores. It also has the same memory configuration, so 6 gigabytes of GDDR6 at 14 gigabits per second on a 192 bit bus for 336 gigabytes per second of bandwidth. It's still built on TSMC's 12 nanometer process as well. However, the laptop RTX 2060 isn't clocked anywhere near what the desktop card can achieve. The desktop card has a base clock of 1365 megahertz and a boost of 1680 megahertz, with GPU boost taking the GPU even higher. The laptop variant is clocked at just 960 megahertz base with a boost of 1200 megahertz so the boost clock is even lower than the desktop card's base clock. Nvidia did this to shave the TDP down from 160 watts to 80 to 90 watts, which is more suitable for laptop designs. And this is where buyers can get a bit misled. You simply won't get RTX 2060 performance from the laptop variant, despite both having the same name. Truing laptop GPUs are also more aggressively underclocked relative to the desktop cards than Pascal ever was. So I'm not expecting to see the same margins or performance improvements as on the desktop. I would prefer if this GPU is instead called the RTX 2060M, but enough on that. Let's move on. For the upcoming blue benchmarks, I've used the brand new ASUS ROG Strix SCAR 2 GL504GV. That name is a bit of a mouthful, but essentially this is a typical 15-inch gaming notebook. It's not a slim and light machine like the ASUS Zephyrus. It's just a regular design that's 25 millimeters thick and about 2.4 kilograms heavy. There's no Max-Q RTX 2060, so this GPU is suited to these sorts of thicker designs. The CPU here is Intel's 6-core Core i7-8750H, the go-to offering for gaming laptops these days. The same CPU is used for our Pascal laptops and other RTX laptops we've tested so far, so we really are looking at just the differences in GPU performance today. This laptop came with 16GB of RAM in a single channel configuration, but for testing I swapped that out for 32GB in dual channel to keep it apples to apples with other laptops in our database. I also used the laptop's balanced fan mode because in gaming I found no difference in performance between it and the louder turbo mode. Finally, I've done all testing at 1080p, the standard resolution for gaming laptop displays, with this unit packing a 144Hz panel. So we're going to kick this one off with a look at Battlefield 1. It's not the most recent Battlefield title, but it's one that plays well on laptops. The RTX 2060 here manages to squeeze marginally ahead of the GTX 1070 Max-Q, providing over 100 FPS on average with a similar 1% low to the GTX 1070 Max-Q. It's also 28% faster than the GTX 1060 6GB in this title, however it can't quite match the GTX 1070, falling 10% behind the older Pascal GPU. Now, if you've been following our desktop coverage of the RTX series, these results might seem a little strange. On the desktop side, the RTX 2060 is more than 50% faster than the GTX 1060 in this title, and more than 10% faster than the GTX 1070. However, on the laptop side, the margins are much smaller and the comparisons are very different with the new Turing GPU failing to beat the GTX 1070. This is again why I feel the naming is a bit misleading. If any buyers have seen RTX 2060 desktop coverage, they might believe their new RTX 2060 laptop will outperform an older GTX 1070 model. But that's really not the case. While the RTX 2060 easily clocks above 1800 MHz on the desktop, in our ASUS laptop it sits around 1450 MHz, hence the large performance discrepancy. Meanwhile, our laptop GTX 1070 clocks at 1800 MHz, compared to slightly over 1900 MHz on the desktop. Pascal laptop GPUs simply clocked a lot higher and closer to their desktop counterparts than these new Turing GPUs do. That's not to say performance is overall bad. 
Here we're looking at Wolfenstein 2, which is very favorable to NVIDIA's Turing GPU architecture. The RTX 2060 comes in 34% ahead of the GTX 1060, although it still gets beaten badly by the GTX 1070. Watch Dogs 2 is one of those games that tends to be more CPU constrained in a laptop, although we're still seeing a handy 25% performance uplift in this older Ubisoft title. With that said, this is one of the few games I tested where the RTX 2060 performed below the GTX 1070 Max-Q. In Far Cry 5, again we're looking at a 25% performance improvement over the GTX 1060, however this time it doesn't lose as badly to other GPUs, outperforming the GTX 1070 Max-Q by 6% and only slotting in 3% behind the RTX 2070 Max-Q. With the RTX 2060 consistently delivering above 60 FPS at ultra settings here, this is a handy improvement over the GTX 1060. Resident Evil 2 is one of the newest games in our test suite, using the balanced quality preset which is nearly visually identical to the maximum preset. Laptops in general perform really well, achieving over 100 FPS for the most part. The RTX 2060 is 35% faster than the GTX 1060, only 7% slower than the GTX 1070, and a decent 11% faster than the GTX 1070 Max-Q. Hitman 2 is a punishing title for CPU constrained hardware, but current generation laptops are still capable of a 60fps experience at 1080p using maximum quality settings. The RTX 2060 is just 23% faster than the GTX 1060 here, but other margins are in line with what we've previously seen. Impressively, the RTX 2060 is 4% faster than the RTX 2070 Max-Q in this title. Dirt 4 sees the RTX 2060 hold a 37% performance advantage over the GTX 1060, while still coming in 12 percent behind the GTX 1070 and 10% behind the newer RTX 2070 Max-Q. Even with 8x MSAA in this game at 1080p, you're still in for a rock solid experience. Probably time to throw an older title into the mix, how about Deus Ex Mankind Divided. This game has one of the smallest margins between the RTX 2060 and the GTX 1070, with the 2060 only 7% behind. It's also 8% faster than the GTX 1070 Max-Q and 36% ahead of the GTX 1066 GB. You're probably wondering about Battlefield 5 performance as well. Here, the new RTX 2060 is only 23% faster than the GTX 1060. However, other margins are in line with what we've seen previously. At 1080p, paired with a high refresh laptop display, the RTX 2060 is very capable and delivers a great experience. Rounding this performance comparison out with a 10th title, I've settled on Prey. This represents a game that really doesn't benefit all that much from the faster GPU. It's only 13% faster than the GTX 1060 here, 7% slower than the GTX 1070, and 7% faster than the GTX 1070 Max-Q. I'm guessing you probably want to see some more graphs. Assassin's Creed Odyssey is one of the hardest games to get running smoothly on a laptop. I think it's down to the CPU, and for some reason Gigabyte's Aero laptops get destroyed in this title. That said, with the very high preset, you're looking at a 60fps average at 1080p with the RTX 2060. This is the final comparison here. We have Middle Earth Shadow of War. The RTX 2060 is 32% faster than the GTX 1060, 10% slower than the GTX 1070, and 9% behind the RTX 2070 Max-Q. I'm guessing you want some performance summaries here. I actually benchmarked a total of 20 games on this GPU and refreshed the data for a number of other GPUs just for this comparison, so this is probably the best look at performance yet. The big one here is the RTX 2060 versus the GTX 1060. While probably not the best comparison in terms of laptop pricing, which I'll talk about in a moment, the RTX 2060 is a good 28% faster than the GTX 1060 6GB on average. That's a much better margin than I was expecting after the RTX 2070 Max-Q review, which only clocked in around 10% faster than its direct naming predecessor, the GTX 1070 Max-Q. Speaking of the GTX 1070 Max-Q, the RTX 2060 is also faster than that GPU to the tune of a 6% average. It's not faster in every title, but it's only in older games where it appears to struggle. Anything recent and the RTX 2060 pulls away. To my surprise, the RTX 2060 isn't much slower than the RTX 2070 Max-Q on average. We're talking 4% slower on average, with some games clocking in faster than what is supposed to be a higher tier GPU. This could place prospective RTX 2070 Max-Q buys in an awkward position, with the cheaper option providing almost as good performance. Where the comparison isn't as favourable is when comparing the RTX 2060 to the GTX 1070. The RTX 2060 is 11% slower on average, losing in every single game by between 2% and 20%. 
And this is where we start to see the weaknesses of Nvidia's RTX laptop lineup once again. With desktop GPUs, the RTX 2060 is on average 53% faster than the GTX 1066 GB. Here, with laptop GPUs, it's only 28% faster. And this also means that rather than being more than 10% faster than a GTX 1070, it's 11% slower. Not a good situation for those who might accidentally use desktop data for their laptop buying decision. It does seem that within a generation though, the comparisons make sense. The GTX 1070 in laptops is about 40% faster than a laptop GTX 1060, which is similar to the desktop margin. The RTX 2060 is 4% slower than the RTX 2070 Max-Q, and while we haven't tested the full laptop RTX 2070 yet, with desktop cards, the 2060 is 11% slower than the 2070 on average, so the margins we've seen so far also seem to make sense there. If you're looking for a direct desktop comparison to the RTX 2060, it's hard to give a specific one, but so far it looks to be between the GTX 1660 Ti and the GTX 1060. I did cop a bit of flack for making these laptop desktop comparisons in the last video, but again, the RTX 2060 laptop and desktop GPUs, well, they have the same name. And with a Pascal card like the GTX 1070, laptop performance was only slightly behind desktop performance, but here the margins are much more significant. So why talk about all these laptop desktop comparisons and why are they relevant? Well, that's down to typical laptop pricing. Nvidia's RTX laptop pricing is more in line with the desktop products than what makes sense for laptops given their performance. With the RTX 2060, we're looking at a typical price for a Core i7 8758 system of around 1800 US dollars. For much of the GTX 1060's life, you could find a typical laptop for around the $1,300 mark. So that's a 38% increase in price for 28% more performance. On the desktop side though, the RTX 2060 at $350 came in around 40% more expensive than the GTX 1066GB at $250, so the margins are similar. But the desktop RTX 2060 is more than 50% faster than a 1066GB, making it good value. With laptops, you're not getting the same margin, so value is much worse. And that's only talking about typical mid-generation GTX 1060 laptop pricing. Today, GTX 1060 laptops are easily available for less than 1100 US. So you're facing spending $700 more for an equivalent RTX 2060 machine, which is a serious price jump. It doesn't get much better comparing the RTX 2060 to the GTX 1070. On the desktop, this actually made sense. Both GPUs were about the same price. The RTX 2060 is a decent amount faster, so it ended up better value and therefore the better buy in that price tier. With laptops, it's not quite the same. Again, here we see the RTX 2060 laptops coming in around the typical price for a GTX 1070 system, $1,800 US. But the value simply isn't there because the laptop RTX 2060 is 11% slower. And with today's prices often sitting at $1,500 or less for a GTX 1070 laptop, it really is a no-brainer to choose the older Pascal option. It's hard to say what will happen when GTX 1070 laptops leave the market, especially as a lot of models are currently on an end-of-life fire sale, but right now we're facing a situation where you'll have to spend as much as a typical GTX 1070 laptop last year while receiving less performance. And that's a pretty terrible situation to be in. The pricing situation also throws into question the RTX 2070 Max-Q. Typical laptops with that GPU are around 2400 US dollars, which is 33% more than RTX 2060 laptops for only a 4% performance uplift. Sure, you get the added portability, but geez, that is a lot to pay for it. With that said, this hasn't really changed compared to Pascal models where the GTX 1070 laptops were considerably cheaper than slower GTX 1070 Max-Q units for the most part. There's really no other way to put it. This laptop GPU is disappointing. It does present a performance gain over the GTX 1060, but it's not priced in the same product category. It's slower than GTX 1070 laptops, which launched at the same price and are now cheaper. So, I'm really gobsmacked at this situation given the RTX 2060 is actually a good buy for desktop owners. Right now, I honestly could not recommend an RTX 2060 laptop over a GTX 1070 option, and I'm definitely concerned about that pricing being around the same for less performance for your laptops moving forward. For RTX 2060 laptops to be worth buying, they need to be priced around $1,400, US, and that's a $400 price cut, which seems like a tough ask. 
And yes, you can get an RTX 2060 laptop for 1400 right now, but it only has a quad-core Core i5-8300H CPU inside, not the standard 6-core 8750H. It is a better deal, but it's not an equivalent comparison, and I still wouldn't buy it over a $1,500 GTX 1070 system. So those are my thoughts on the RTX 2060 for laptops, a highly disappointing product right now, and certainly one that doesn't live up to the expectations set by the generally quite good desktop card. Subscribe for more coverage of NVIDIA's RTX laptop GPUs as we get them in for testing. Consider supporting us on Patreon, and I'll catch you in the next one.